Hey everybody, Camp Next 24 here, and this is going to be a video guide on how to be good at Mario Kart 7. Um, it's a guide I wanted to make for a friend, because he just recently picked up Mario Kart. But uh, since I realized the easiest way for me to explain this stuff would be um, through a video, I thought why not just make it into a video tutorial and post it on my channel. So uh, my disclaimer here is going to be, I'm not a Mario Kart Pro, but I am pretty good. I have roughly 8,000 VR, um, I've three-starred all of the Grand Prix, and I've beaten all the expert staff ghosts in time trials. So those are uh, my qualifications if you're concerned with that. And this video is not going to teach you to be a pro, but it's going to teach you to be pretty good. At least good enough to earn VR easier, or th get three stars easier, whatever it might be you're going for. So, first thing that we need to cover I'll cover in time trials. <laughs> Alright, so the very first technique that's worth learning is the boost at the beginning. And there are like different degrees of how well you can do this. But as the like two is fading away, like right as it's about to fade away, if you press and hold A to accelerate, um, you'll get a speed boost. Now, the next thing, you'll notice we can take turns like this, but it's pretty slow. So what we can do, as I'll show you in a moment, as I was doing earlier, is uh, drifting. If we press and hold R while on a turn, or really anywhere, but it works obviously best on a turn, and then you can take the circle pad, you can either keep it neutral, you can pull towards the direction you're uh, like turning in, or you can push away. And if you pull towards it, you'll build up this like speed boot, the little flames below my wheels. Uh, faster if you keep it neutral it'll well, take you like a medium amount of time and if you um, pull uh, yeah if you pull it'll take you a long time now notice how long that speed took uh, that turn took us and how slow we came out of it but if we drift then we can um, get nice speed boosts out of it you can also control it a bit by switching between pulling and pushing now um, next thing I want to talk about you might have seen me do it a little bit already because some of the stuff's like pretty much instinct. Uh, when you're going off a ramp, whether it's for a glider or uh, a ramp like this one, if you press R right about as you're flying off, and this will work for a lot of speed bumps too, like for example here or uh, right here, you'll get a nice little speed boost. It's not big, but it's still significant enough. And uh, another thing. While you can use mushrooms when you're just on the road like this, that doesn't help you a lot. It's a lot more helpful to use mushrooms when they can help you skip across something like rough terrain. Because uh, that'll really cut off some seconds because otherwise um, it will be far too slow to drive over there. And it's basically just the principle that the shortest distance... It's basically just the principle that the shortest distance between two points is a line. There is one more technique I want to show off here. And, um, so let's see. There's probably something like eight or nine techniques total in this video I want to show off. Again, on the two, get the boost. But let's say something happens, you just fall off the edge. Do not press A until the moment you hit the ground. This will take some practice because you'll want to hit A in anticipation. But you'll notice how instead of getting just completely screwed over, like let's say I hold A the whole time like, and I, I'm really slow, I need to build up my acceleration again. But if I don't press it until the moment I hit the ground, you get a nice little speed boost. And this is great for recovery, um, it'll keep your momentum going if something happens. There you go. Um, one more thing, actually. Uh, while, I guess while we're here, if you, um, pull upwards, or rather you pull down on the control pad, you'll aim upwards with the glider, and you'll go a bit slower, but you can go higher. And if you push down, or you push forward, then you'll, uh, go down. And it will uh, make you go a little faster. 
Now, this can actually be applied to other ramps too, and you'll see what I mean in a second. Um, if you pull backwards while going off a ramp, you'll go a little higher and a little bit slower, but sometimes you can do things like this, so I go over less of that grass. I can likewise push forward, and while it's not always visible, like, believe me, this happens, you kind of do this nose dive off the ramp, and it, um, it makes you go a little bit faster. Like there, because we got a lot of air, you could sort of see it happening. Uh, I think that's about it for techniques we can learn in time trials. Um, the rest of them... There is one thing, I guess. Um, it will be really helpful for you to know the fastest routes on all the courses. And simply put, the easiest way to do this is just watch videos of like world record speed runs for this. Like, you can uh, look them up on YouTube. There's one channel where he has like a bunch, some guy has like a ton of really great runs on lots of courses. And for the most part, um, the routes he takes are the ones that are best to take even in regular races. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. Next thing um, is your cart and characters. Now some people don't realize this, but your characters actually affect a lot about um, the uh, statistics of your cart. Even like the character affects about as much as all the other cart parts combined. There are five weight classes, uh, and I don't have them all memorized, but they range from something like featherweight or like ultralight to uh, heavy. And the featherweights are stuff like Shy Guy, Lakitu, uh, Toad, and Koopa. And if we look at the stats we've got here, uh, you'll notice we've got speed and acceleration relatively balanced there. Um, and if we switch back to a heavy, which are the other extreme, Bowser, Wario, Metal Mario, and uh, Honey Queen, you'll notice the stats are pretty radically different. There's something like a bar and a half less acceleration, about a bar and a half more speed. Um, while the characters affect most, rather all stats, the most important changes are really going to be in um, acceleration and speed. Um, heavy characters are plus speed and minus acceleration, and ultralights are um, minus speed and plus acceleration. Whatever you choose is up to your preferences. I personally like to go with the heavy and then build a cart uh, to kind of cater to that. Now, cart parts you unlock when you get coins in this game. Um, besides the golden cart pieces, which can be unlocked with alternate methods as well. But uh, basically, the regular cart pieces you'll get from up to 5,000 coins. At first, it's in intervals of like 50, then I think it's 100, then 200, and then just every 500 coins you'll get one. Until finally we've got them all. Now, um, all the carts have the stats that you can see, and you can see the bars moving and whatnot. But they also have hidden stats. Like, for example, while you don't really see it, the wooden wheels are actually the best wheels for underwater. They get a speed boost there. Like, the gliders, even though they seem like almost all of them have the same stats, they actually have different uh, hidden stats. Like, some will have different air handling, different minus speed bonuses in the air. Uh, and you can find that on the Mario Kart, or rather on the Mario Wiki, on the page about Mario Kart 7. I'll link that in the description so you can check it all out. Because it's definitely something you should know about. Um, again, the most important stats are probably going to be speed, acceleration, and handling. And I guess maybe an off-road. As far as I'm concerned, weight only actually matters for, um, for when you knock into other things. Um, it may or may not matter underwater... But, like, for example, I know that heavy characters tend to be uh, slower underwater. But, anyway. Um, so just choose a cart that suits you. And do note that the higher speed and lower acceleration and handling you go with, the more skill-based it's, you're going to have, or rather skill-intensive, uh, your time is going to be. So, for, like, for time trials, well, you should definitely try and max out on speed and whatnot. When you're playing... Um, online or Grand Prix, it might be better to go for some kind of hybrid of that. Like, for example, I choose Heavy, which is obviously plus speed, Zucchini, which is um, 
I'm pretty sure it's in a tie with the B-Dasher for fastest body. Maybe Blue Falcon was up there too. Yeah, so there's a couple carts with, that are the same speed, but the Zucchini has a little bit more acceleration, just a fraction more. The Paraglider is a pretty balanced glider and a little bit of plus acceleration without too much minus speed in the air. And then the Mushroom tires are actually just overall really balanced tires. So I did this so I could get some decent handling and acceleration, because believe me, when you get hit by items, you're going to want handling and acceleration. Now, uh, I guess that I've covered that. I suppose I can show off some, uh, some other techniques worth knowing. Um, so let's see, I'll just do a Grand Prix or whatever, do some races here, and I'll uh, cut to some clips when they're useful. Alright, so one thing, when you're at the beginning of a race, it might actually be beneficial for you to go a little bit conservatively. I know it's really tempting to just rush to the lead right away, but sometimes it's better to come from behind a bit. You'll notice how I'm still really close with all these people, and I'm not using my star, because that's going to be a super useful item in that, let's say someone gets a blue shell, like, I can take this Bowser guy here, and Yoshi's up there. He's got a little bit of distance on me, but he shouldn't be hard to take. So, um... Essentially, I'm going to hold on to these items until I have to, and if I'm going to be watching the bottom screen the whole time, this is something that develops over time, like when you're still just starting out, it uh, might be helpful to not really, to, or rather to just focus on the top screen the whole time, but like, I'm going to dev uh, devote a little bit of focus to the bottom screen, just to see if anyone has a blue shell, or if anyone has lightning. Oh, someone has a blue shell. Now, blue shells are actually possible to dodge if you have uh, star power, that's possible. If you, um, I've heard it works with Tanuki, but you have to time it super well. Or, if you have a mushroom, and I'll try and show it off in one of these future races. It's one of those reasons you want to go out a little bit conservative, but still pretty fast. Because having a mushroom in the lead, especially with an item behind your back, which I'll explain also in a bit, is super useful. Um, oh dear, I almost got trucked by that car. So I ended up not even needing the mushroom or the uh, star power. But you know that is um, a nice precaution precautionary item to have. Um, one thing about that, if I wanted, at the last moment, I could have also just used it and just used it to cut across the grass because it would give me the speed boost and whatnot, take more shortcuts, get more time uh, on people. It's a great way for coming back, just cut off huge amounts of distance. And on some courses, you know, you can do that really a lot. So here I'm actually not even... Okay, so I did get the speed boost. I was hoping I would just kind of not really get it. But I'm going to let these guys pass me a little bit. I'm not going to hold that item behind me right now. When you're in the lead, if you don't have a mushroom, then what you're going to want to do is grab items and hold them behind your back. Oh, shucks, I missed those. Um, Alright, so I'm in third, which is actually, as far as items go, I think it's kind of optimal, because notice how I have a mushroom now. So I can use it to take a shortcut if I need to, nice recovery, or when I pass this person, I'm sure someone's going to hit a blue shell. On average, that you'll see one blue shell per race or so. Okay, I've seen two before, and I've definitely had a bunch of races without any, but usually there will be one, uh, especially if it's a longer course. Um, now, I'm, oh, here's something, bloopers. If you go off a speed boost, you can wipe the, um, the bloop goop, I guess the ink off of your windshield, like that ramp, or if I, okay, someone's got lightning, so I was going to lose my items, so um, I could have used that to get rid of the stuff as well. Uh, Tanuki, well, Tanuki's just kind of an item you have to hold on to, and then whenever an item, some other item, like a sh red shell's behind you, you just got to uh, hope for the best and that, with your timing. I don't know why I said hope for the best. There's not really much. Alright, yeah. So, anyway, I've heard you can time something with the Tanuki. 
to blue shell dodge, but I've never done it. I heard it's incredibly difficult. But the moment the blue shell's coming down, and again, I'll try and get you a clip of this, um, you want to press your mushroom, so you'll just barely avoid it. And one thing I realized I haven't mentioned yet that I definitely should have, uh, coins, they don't just unlock car parts. They make you minimally faster just to have them, and also when you grab them. So, uh, grab coins. You can have up to ten at a time. You should try and rush for them as much as possible. In, uh, time trials they don't respawn, but in the other modes they do. Now, the items in this game are largely uh, based around luck, really, so uh, it's what you got to do is essentially learn how to play that luck into your own hands so, um, so that it never really is detrimental to you, or as rarely as possible. Again, I'm going to actually go out after these guys. Because I want to score something good, like here I've got star power. Oh, that wasn't supposed to happen, but anyway. Now I can uh, breeze through these guys, hit them, I can take this shortcut. I'm in fourth, get triple reds, one down. I'm going to leave the other two around me for defense for now. Maybe I'll take out that guy. Um, so here's something you can do. Notice I have a green shell. This works with bananas, with bob bombs. So I don't really recommend it much with bob bombs, uh, but especially since you won't even have those in the lead too much. Uh, but bananas and green shells, and uh, well, actually red shells too. Uh, having a red shell behind you is like, super useful. But if you press and hold L, then it'll keep the item behind you. And if someone tries to red shell you, those are really effective at homing in. I think they actually have made them better in this title than in previous Mario Kart titles. Then what you can do is, um... It'll... The red shell will hit the green shell that's directly behind you. It'll break the shell, but you'll be safe. Or the banana or whatever. And red shell in first place behind you is super useful. Because if someone passes you, like, with a shortcut, then you now, uh, just turned a defensive item into an offensive item. Um because you can now hit them uh, instead of holding it behind you for protection because in places other than first like it just gradually gets less and less useful to hold an item like that behind your back and this is another one of those things that becomes pretty much an instinct uh, it might hurt your hands a little bit for a while I don't think I've ever had problems with that but uh, sometimes it's really nice to hit triple shrooms just because you press those once and you don't have to hold for them to stay behind your back. Triple shrooms are also, or um, not triple shrooms, I meant triple bananas. Triple bananas are also great because you can toss down one or two and then keep the last one behind you. And then, uh, it's really a shame I haven't been able to show it off yet, but I want to show off a blue shell dodge. Hopefully this, this race will, will be it. Alright, so, this is another one of those courses where knowing the shortcuts might help a lot, because there's a, if you have the mushrooms for it, there's a grassy part where you can skip ahead a ton. Anyway, I want to, I want to stay in like, ooh nice, triple shrooms, so I can use like two of these to skip ahead of people, and then like another one to uh, use as a blue shell dodge. Oh, when you're uh, going downhill, like a big downhill like that one, like that ramp, if you uh, press R to just hop over and over, it'll, um, it'll help you out a bit. I'm not sure why this is, but uh, it will. See, there we go. This is what I was talking about, how knowing the shortcuts and having the mushrooms can be really helpful. Because I went from like 6th but barely behind the pack to 1st uh, and... Uh, 
uh, fairly hard, sorry, fairly far ahead of most people. So, you know, it's working out pretty nicely. Um, checking the bottom screen periodically, especially as you learn the courses really well. By the way, mirror mode, you're going to hate it, probably. Um, especially as you learn the courses really well, uh, they're going to become borderline instinctive. Okay, someone's got a lightning. That's a shame. I really, really wanted to show off a blue shell dodge. But in the meantime, I might as well talk about a few other things. Um, my recommendations for if you want to unlock everything in this game is best way to go about it is probably just play around on Grand Prix, try and three-star all of them. And then when you unlock Mirror Mode, try and three-star the Mirror Mode ones before you get uh, 150cc. Because that way, um, this is a tip I picked up from some other video on getting three stars. That way, um, the courses won't be that like ingrained into your mind to where it just screws with you all the time. Like if if you're doing mirror mode for a course you've played like two times before, like it's not or three times whatever uh, before, it's really not going to be that big of a difference in feel than if you've played that course regularly so many times. Um, after a while, see, yeah, sadly there, I just kind of had to take it, and there's something on my screen. Um, but, let's see, what, what was I going off about? I don't even remember. That's a shame. I don't think it was that important, though. I know it's just some minor, like, really minor time saver. Oh, yeah. Um... It was talking about convenience with the order in which you do things. Saying you're not going to get super screwed over if you played a course tons of times and just suddenly it's like, you know, turning against you, as I suppose you could say. Um, yeah, this video has actually been longer than I hoped for it to be. But there you go, three stars. That's, for me, it's like pretty much effortless to get three stars now, but I remember when I was first trying, it was kind of a struggle. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's all the main tricks and techniques that I know. Um, and yeah, meanwhile, I'm just going to try and gather a clip of a nice uh, blue shell for you guys. Alright, so uh, one technique I should mention. Ooh, snap, wow. Got hit there. Uh, it's hard to get a clip of it because it's something that just kind of happens. But you'll notice if you go behind someone for long enough. Well, there I hit a mushroom. Or, I mean, uh, a banana. But um, you can... Use them to, like, break the wind for you. I guess that's what the mentality is. Or the uh, rationale is behind how it works. And you'll just get a nice speed boost from that if you hold it for long enough. Alright, since it's taken me a long time to get a clip of a blue shell dodge, I guess I get to show off this as well. Um, this is, like, a stupid little uh, glitch that happens in Makawuhu. And while there are other similar shortcuts you can take like this, this is the most drastic one in that... Uh, I've faced people, faced my friends, given them something like a 20 or a 30 second head start, and I've still been able to beat them. What you do is you uh, fall behind a bit to get a mushroom or a star. Triple shrooms and star is definitely the best. Um, you can do this without, but it's a lot easier if you do. And then uh, you basically launch yourself off into the water here. And this is like a massive shortcut because... Uh, Right there, we just finished the first section of the course. And, like, we just skipped almost the entire second section right there. Like, if you look at the map, everyone is a lot behind us. Well, the course is a little tangled. But, like, once it... You can tell, like, how far people are behind. Um, Nintendo, I believe at first their stance was that they're not going to do anything about it. Although I believe they have decided now they will actually end up patching it. Because uh, I guess enough people complained or whatever. Essentially, uh, the way things stand now, until it gets patched, um, is if you want to succeed on Makawuhu, you need to be able to do the shortcut. Like, in the in low VR groups, like in the, like the low 1,000, even like 2,000, you'll probably get away with it and still pass a few people. But once you get in, like, the multiple thousands, like, you have to do this. Like, almost every single racer will do it. Alright, so, uh, watching the bottom screen, I see someone just got a blue shell, and hopefully I can time this right, uh, so this red's probably gonna hit me, hopefully the blue, see how they did that, right as it's about to come down, it takes some practice to get it right, I can do it maybe about 50% of the time, 
Um, but, again, practice makes perfect. Like, the Lakitu boost, the one where, uh, you know, you get the boost after falling out. At first, I had, like, a pretty low consistency of do doing it, but after a while, now I get it maybe, like, 80-90% of the time. Um, and I just, I did, for the record, I just did this, like, 50cc, because I figured I'm gonna be ahead of everyone, like, all the time. So, they're gonna get blue shells often. Uh, I guess that's about it, then, for what I wanted to show off. I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover. Um, and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. I realize it's kind of long. It's like, what, like 25 minutes or something? I'll find that out for sure during editing. But uh, it's basically everything I know. Uh, maybe minus like a few tiny tidbits that just didn't pop to mind. But definitely all the main things you need to know if you want to be, uh, if you want to do pretty well. When I'm racing online, I tend to very consistently place in the upper half of the racers in a race, and sometimes depending on what group I'm in, I'll be in first or second pretty much every single time. Um, so yeah, hopefully you found these techniques helpful. Uh, if you liked it, please rate, comment, subscribe, send this to your friends. Check out my other videos. I have a few that are just me like talking and playing Mario Kart. Otherwise, I've got walkthrough stuff. And I will see you guys next time.